Who really controls local elected officials in your city council or your county? Is it the elected officials themselves, or are they controlled by the government staff infection? Let's find out. Thank you for watching. My name is Glenn Morgan, and this is We the Govern. And I just want to address, because we've raised this question before, and I've discussed this at times in other videos and certainly many articles on my website, is the government staff infection or this concept of the deep state or the equivalent of the deep state at a local government level. And it raises this question about who really controls local elected officials and policy where you live. And this question was kind of came up recently because of a quote from a Democrat uh, elected official in the state legislature who was actually not in Washington. She was down in the uh, neighboring state of Oregon, down in Portland at a, at a conference recently in April. And she raised the, she said, local control, meaning these local elected officials, it's just garbage, that they don't really have any control, that they really don't know what they're doing. Now, I really appreciate this because this forum, uh, th this was at a forum that was done by a lot of central, put on by a lot of central planners. It was a, a forum that had been delayed because of COVID a couple years. And so this Yimby Town 2022, just a lot of special interests and central planners all getting together. And I played this video just recently, but I do want to play this clip again because if you didn't see it before, it's a 50 second clip. It's worth watching. Here's what she has to say. Davina, anything to add? Oh, I have so much to add. <laughs> Um, the local control, it's, a, it's garbage. It's just complete garbage. Because I'll tell you, local, local, local electeds don't know anything. They literally don't know anything. They go in, no, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. You get elected and you're just so excited to be there. And the easiest thing in the world to do is what staff recommends because they don't know anything. They don't research. They haven't done their homework. They know nothing about policy. And and, but they like the title. Most of them just like the title and it's super easy to show up and do what staff recommends. And I'll tell you, I, I know many local electeds who would love for the state to step in because we are the ones that get accosted in the grocery store by our neighbors who say, how dare you consider upzoning? And so what she's really talking about there was that uh, her experience as a former Bothell City Council member and her friends who are in other local elected officials in Bothell or Muckleteo or in other small cities run almost entirely by Democrats in the greater Puget Sound area. And she's speaking from experience. Uh, the easiest thing to do is just do what staff tells you. And one of the things that she mentions in there, and this is a particularly damning quote in my opinion, is that uh, they, they just like the title, right? And they, it is super easy for them just to show up and do what staff recommends. And I think that that's an, uh, an interesting observation as somebody like Representative Dewar, who was on the inside of that decision process and recognizing that uh, local elected officials really don't have any control. It's this idea that staff is telling them what to do at all times, which of course raises the logical conclusion or the next question that you would have to have, which is exactly how many local elected officials are nothing more than sock puppets for government staff. And then when I talk about a government staff infection, this is really what I'm talking about, is that the staff and the special interests that control them are manipulating and controlling the elected officials by ensuring that the only thing that they do, the only thing they have on their agendas, the only thing they vote on, is whatever staff wants them to vote on, which essentially removes local control from the decision-making process that we, in theory, are putting these people in office to do. And that raises the big question, because that's certainly not what any local elected official would ever want you to think. They want to convince you, local politicians, politicians want to convince you that they are in control themselves, that nobody is uh, manipulating them like a puppet, and they certainly don't want to admit to being a sock puppet for staff, and so they want you to believe that they're in total control. But unfortunately, when you look deeper and you actually pay attention to what many of these elected officials, and I'm sure that Representative Doerr is right, that most of her friends, the Democrats who are elected to office, are simply just one-dimensional uh, puppets for whatever special interests are influencing staff and controlling what they do. And this is not uh, an extreme critique specifically of the Democrats, because I think that there's plenty of Republicans that are elected to office who end up filling that same role, whether they're in Eastern Washington or whether they're even in a city that uh, it, where you have kind of a divided council or city council or county commission. But nevertheless, unfortunately, this is just an easy default position for a lot of local elected officials to get into. 
I've written articles about the problem that we have with government staff. I wrote, this is a 200, or 2014 article I wrote called Gangrene and the Government Staff Infection, back when I worked at the Freedom Foundation, just analyzing how a special interest manipulates staff at all levels to determine outcomes at the local government level. And I've written other stories, like this one from the city of SeaTac from 2016, just about how even when the local um, people elect a new council that comes in, how immediately staff does everything they can to undermine, disrupt, deceive, and manipulate the elected officials once they get into office because the staff believes that they control everything and that the elected officials are idiots, just like Representative Doerr um, uh, implied when she was talking about how ignorant and incompetent all of them are when they get into office. And so it is just a serious problem, and I've been covering it for a long time. Because the challenge is that the deeper you dig into government, especially at a local level, and you'll see this at the state and, uh, of course, at the federal level too, the more you discover that this government staff infection and the control this has over the politicians is uh, really deep. It is a deep, deep state sort of thing. I understand why that term started being used. And this idea of the fact that all these special interests, it, the minute you get an elected official that starts to step on your toes or starts to question or starts to dig too deep, boy, do they ever get their hackles raised and they want to push back. And the deeper you dive, the more you discover that that is the tendency that they have, which of course then makes you wonder exactly how many of these elected officials are nothing more than puppets to be controlled by whatever staff tells them to do. You see it all the time. We see it everywhere we go. It's when you wonder why that school board never does anything significant to change the curriculum, perhaps, or to adjust the budget problems, or that city council goes down the yellow brick road of a guaranteed failure and a disaster because that's what staff wants them to do. Staff's never going to take the heat for it. The elected official will when it all goes south. So oftentimes that raises the question again, how many of them are just puppets? Because when uh, an elected official gets into office, I've witnessed this many times myself, and they're actually willing to think for themselves, which is a rare trait, to be honest, and they get in there and they decide, I'm going to start looking into this and find out what's going to happen. They get gut punched by staff, first chance staff gets, because, boy, that is a threat to the control that local government staff has exerted over those elected officials. And really, let's face it, most people don't want to come to work and have to tangle, you know, get uh, tangled with the other staff or special interests that are trying to manipulate the process. And that's usually not how most people want to spend their days, especially when it's a part-time uh, elected position, oftentimes unpaid. And they're going to go in and they're going to tangle horns with uh, the staff or the special interests of the other elected officials that are already there and already with the program. And let's face it again, most people just don't feel like getting, uh, you know, prepared for, you know, brutal combat, right? When you dig into uh, the numbers or starting to go through the books. And one of the reasons why I have a lot of respect for local elected officials who are willing to question the status quo or actually dig deep into the budget or actually start to question some of these contracts or the central planning schemes or the weird uh, kickback programs that local government has with the grant grifting operations. When they're willing to do that, that's somebody who is willing to actually get fired up and prepared every time they go in because they're willing to dig deep and have those fights. It's rare to find people like that. And one of the reasons is that even sometimes when that elected official prevails, it's kind of a traumatizing experience. When they've actually gone in and engaged and had this incredible fight over whatever it was, it's it, they come away, sure, even if they prevailed, staff's going to come right back at them because staff's paid full-time to be there. Usually these elected officials, many of them are just part-time or not paid much at all, and it becomes very difficult for them to keep coming back and just fighting time and time again. It's much easier just to be the rubber stamp, which is what most, especially Democrat elected officials are at a local level. You know, they aren't terribly uh, opposed to those central planning schemes. They don't mind the grant grifting. They believe government's always a solution, and they think that you can't spend your money as well as this professional staff here certainly plans on doing. So why would they defend the taxpayers and the money that you're giving to that government official? They just find it easier just to rubber stamp whatever staff tells them and, uh, and then hand out proclamations and awards to just basically make it easy street when you're in government. And it's also easier, even if you kind of like it and you do want to question, just to watch somebody else take the heat and get beat up by staff or the special interests. And uh, it's certainly a lot easier to do that than to be the one who's actually engaging and getting involved. And this is the big challenge that I think we are facing out there. Because when you do find somebody who's willing to get in there and raise those questions, they are under attack, oftentimes constantly. And if they can make it a partisan thing, usually it's it, what I find oftentimes, either an independent thinking Democrat or it's a Republican that gets elected in a Democrat area. And by God, everybody's going to pile on them and beat them up for daring to question anything about whatever the establishment's decided, whatever that government staff infection's decided they're going to push. That's not an easy way to go to work every day. 
So I think that we really owe Representative Doerr um, a debt of gratitude for dropping her truth bombs like she did. I'm sure she felt that was a safe space in which to drop them because, of course, the attitude of all central planners is that local elected officials are all idiots. And uh, that came out well and very well communicated by the people who were there. But you don't oftentimes hear this spoken out loud. It's kind of something that they know behind the scenes, and especially uh, a Democrat leftist with the background that Representative Dewar has, she knows this firsthand. She knows exactly what she's talking about. And so it's very rare that you hear somebody talk about this. And so I'm really appreciative of the fact that she raised this question about this abuse of the administrative state and the fact that the government staff infection is really who controls and tries to run local government. And it takes strong people, strong local elected officials, to be willing to step up in and engage and engage in that fight seriously to change the direction of where many of these cities are going. So I want to encourage you to start paying more attention to what's happening in your local government and start to recognize those local elected officials who are willing to stand up and clearly think for themselves. Recognize when you see staff trying to set up a local elected official and attack them so that for daring to question whatever's going on there. It's rare. And that's a rare commodity, and it's one we need more and more in local government. So I encourage you to dig deep. Look into what staff is pushing their local elected officials to do, and which local elected officials, the school board level, city council, wherever, who is actually willing to stand up and push back. It's very hard to fight the staff infection, but sometimes we, we genuinely need some kind of, um, of true uh, vaccine or pushback. And the vaccine in this case is going to be freedom and liberty. And uh, that's a real vaccine that could stop this government staff infection. But you got it starts with us, you and I, looking locally at what's happening in our government and starting to make a difference in helping support people who are willing to take those hard stands and ask those questions that really need to be asked. So if you want to learn more, please go to wethegovern.com. You can also link to some of the related articles down below. And uh, I encourage you just to add comments if you have any down below. I do try to respond and read, read them all, and I try to respond to most of them. And uh, tell me what government staff infection you might observe where you live. And I'm sure that you have seen it if you paid attention. But remember, no matter what, this isn't the time to get discouraged or to think that nothing can be done, because it can be. You just have to be willing to get serious and be willing to push back. And you, as an observer or a local elected official or an activist where you live, you can make a big difference if you're willing to show up. Because in the end, the future belongs to those who show up.